Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It is wonderful to be here. And um, I was happy to get here barely on time but on time because there was about that much ice on my car and I knew I had to scrape it off but I didn't realize quite how bad it was. It took me 15 minutes and I was like, oh boy, welcome to Pennsylvania. <laughs> so, but we got it done and God got me here safely. So it's all good. And I see that you are all well, I think. Um, we are missing Michelle this morning. Her father passed away this week, but I spoke with her, and uh, she is fine. She said that her dad was physically really in a bad place, declining, and he's in a better place now. So during the service, of course, we'll have our time of prayer, but keep Michelle in your prayers throughout because um, she's usually a very strong presence. And we're also missing Jill this morning, who is in California, safely in California. So keep, keep them with us, because they're always here with us. Um, as this is the second Sunday in Lent, and I was not here last Sunday, I have something for you. I'm going to bring a little token every Sunday. Very, some, just something little to remind you of the service, hopefully, and um, to help you to keep the, the lesson in mind during the week, um, and then um, you'll, you'll have these tokens. So, for last week, wrong one. That's Lenny. This is you. For last week, Bob preached on Romans 5, and I pulled out uh, these verses from the message translation. Romans 5, 18 to 19. Here it is in a nutshell. Just as one person Adam did it wrong and got us all in this trouble with sin and death. Another person, <clears throat> Jesus, did it right and got us out of it. But more than just getting us out of trouble, he got us into life. One man said no to God and put many people in the wrong, and one man said yes to God and put many in the right. So that's your token for last week. And your token for this week is a map of where Jesus did his ministry in Galilee. It's very, very small. <laughs> I didn't quite realize when I was sticking them all together how little it was going to end up. But it's just to remind you of how Jesus traveled throughout Galilee and spread the word of God because our lesson today is to listen for God's call and to get out there, to go, just do it, like Jesus. So, there's one for each. This is your tiny little map. <laughs> you need a magnifying glass to see it. <laughs>
Michelle later if you want to get me to. Oh, that would be great. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Our opening prayer is the prayer in the uh, communion service, the service of word and table. So if you could turn to page six in your hymnals. I had chosen a different <coughs> confession for us later on, but we'll just use what's in the service of word and table to simplify things. So the opening prayer is on page six. You see it in the middle of the page. Let us pray. Almighty God, to, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our hymn of response is 451, Be Thou My Vision. You may remain seated. back to page 6 now for the prayer of illumination. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The epistle lesson for this morning is Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, 13 through 17. I'll be reading a translation that paraphrases Paul's writings. Hear these words from the message. So how do we fit what we know of Abraham, our first father in the faith, into this new way of looking at things? If Abraham, by what he did for God, got God to approve him, he could certainly have taken credit for it. But the story we're given is a God story, not an Abraham story. What we read in scripture is, Abraham entered into what God was doing for him, and that was the turning point. He trusted God to set him right instead of trying to be right on his own. If you're a hard worker and do a good job, you deserve your pay. We don't call your wages a gift. 
But if you see that the job is too big for you, that it's something only God can do, and you trust him to do it, you could never do it for yourself, no matter how hard and long you worked. Well, that trusting in him to do it is what gets you set right with God, by God. Sheer gift. The famous promise God gave to Abraham, that he and his children would possess the earth, was not given because of something Abraham did or would do. It was based on God's decision to put everything together for him, which Abraham then entered when he believed. If those who get what God gives them only get it by doing everything they are told to do and filling out all the right forms properly signed, that eliminates personal trust completely and turns the promise into an ironclad contract. That's not a holy promise, that's a business deal. A contract drawn up by a hard-nosed nosed lawyer with plenty of fine print only makes sure that you will never be able to collect. But if there is no contract in the first place, simply a promise, and God's promise at that, you can't break it. This is why the fulfillment of God's promise depends entirely on trusting God and his way, and then simply embracing him and what he does. God's promise arrives as pure gift. That's the only way everyone can be sure to get in on it. For those who keep the religious traditions and those who have never heard of them. For Abraham is father of all of us. He is not our racial father. That's reading the story backward. He is our faith father. We call Abraham father not because he got God's attention by living like a saint, but because God made something out of Abraham when he was nobody. Isn't that what we've always read in the scripture? God saying to Abraham, I set you up as father of many peoples. Abraham was first named father and then became a father because he dared to trust God to do what only God could do. Raise the dead to life with a word make something out of nothing. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway, deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. And so he was made father of a multitude of peoples. And God said to him, you're going to have a big family, Abraham. The word of God for all God's people. Our psalm of response is Psalm 121 on page 844 in your hymnal. We'll be using response one. Please stand for this. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, 
a leader of the Jews, who came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I've told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The word of God for all to hear. Thanks, Thanks be to God. You may be seated. As I read Paul's letter to the Romans this week, it really hit me. It struck me that he has a very, very important reminder for us as we take another step into our Lenten journey. Paul's message is that Abraham did an amazing thing when he trusted God enough to leave his home and go from his country to an unknown place. God said, get up, go. And he did. He didn't know where he was going, but he went. He trusted that God had a plan and that God knew what God was doing. And he allowed himself to enter into God's plan, what God was doing. You might not remember everything about that story from Genesis. I didn't. If you go back and look at Genesis 11, 27, you'll see that Abraham was originally named Abram by his father, Terah. Terah, I didn't remember that name at all. Terah left his home in Ur, near Babylon, with Abram, Abram's wife, Sarai, who became Sarah later, and Abram's nephew, Lot, to go into the land of Canaan. Terah set out to go to Canaan, but they didn't get there. 
they ended up settling in Heron. You know what that's like, right? You have a plan, a dream. You're going to accomplish something. So you set off. But somewhere along the way, you didn't accomplish what you imagined. But it was OK. You helped make a home for yourself, for your family. And that was enough. What seemed so clear back then when you were young might seem like a dream now, a dream that faded with the morning. Back to Abraham. Abraham was renamed. He was born Abram, and then God renamed him Abraham. And God completed with Abraham what his father had set out to do. Did Abram, when he was growing up, hear his father talk about going to Canaan when he was young? Genesis 12 says God called Abram. What did that sound like? Was there a deep rumbling voice that came out of a cloud and spoke to Abram in his head, in his soul? Was there a dream that refused to fade in the morning? Or did God sound like a still, small voice? We don't know. But we can be pretty sure that Abram had a plan for that week. There were things that he planned to do. There were things that he expected to do, that other people expected him to do. But he dropped everything. Let it all go. And Paul says, we call Abraham father, not because he got God's attention by living like a saint, but because God, had, God made something out of Abram when he was a nobody. When someone is making a big decision and says that they feel God calling them, we often ask, how do you know? How do you know it's God and not just some secret desire of your own heart? We want to know for certain. How do you know for sure? We want to know, how is this all going to work out? I ask those questions. God doesn't give a lot of details. And Abram doesn't ask. Genesis 12, 1 and 2 say, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. So we went. That was it. Get up, go. OK. That's it. He trusted God so much. And he went where the Lord told him to go. Now, we should be clear. He didn't do everything right along the way. In fact, he took wrong steps as many times as he took right steps. But God just kept going, uh, 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 over here, this way. Come on. There you go. OK, you're good now. But he went. He tried. That's what God wanted. The message paraphrase, which Lauren read for us, says, 
And this is the part where I started to tear up. <laughs> if you see that the job is too big for you, too big for me, that it's something that only God can do, and you trust God to do it, knowing that you could never do it yourself. No matter how hard and how long you work. That, that trusting God to do it, is what sets you right with God. The trust. God doesn't want us to wait until we're certain. God doesn't want us to figure it all out ourselves before we start. God wants us to listen, to trust God, and go. God wants us to move. We don't know everything. We're quite aware of that. We're going to make mistakes along the way, just like everybody does. But God will keep putting us, or our children, or our grandchildren, or somebody else's children, or their grandchildren, or our nieces, or our nephews, back on the right path. Just like God did with Tira, Abram, and Lot. In our gospel lesson, Nicodemus also had to make a move, but his journey was different. Nicodemus didn't travel great distances, great physical distances, from one physical place to another. He traveled in discernment and understanding. He traveled spiritually. He was given the opportunity to change the way he saw the world. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a member of the Sanhedrin, the governing body of the Jews in Israel. He went to talk to Jesus at night and called Jesus a teacher, come from God. Jesus said to him, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. And Nicodemus didn't understand how you could be born again once you were already born. So Jesus rephrased it. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. Jesus went on to say, don't be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. You don't know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. In other words, stop trying to figure it all out. Let go of the need to know all the details and control everything. Let go of the belief that you can or can't build a great community, a great congregation, a great children's program, a great outreach program, a great whatever. Pray. Listen. Make space for the Spirit's plans. Focus on the Spirit and allow yourself to be blown around from one place to the next, from one joy to the next, from one soul to the next. Be born into a new way of being, a new way of seeing the world. Abram probably had plans for that day that God spoke to him. Nicodemus probably had plans, 
After all, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He was basically a member of the Supreme Court of Israel. He knew all the laws. And what did Jesus say to him? Let it go, man. You got to let it go. Let it go. Let go of your plans. Let go of your usual way of doing things. Listen. God is calling you to go somewhere new, to be someone new. Jesus gave Nicodemus a lot to think about. And we don't really know what he was thinking that night. But a few chapters later, when the rest of the Pharisee leaders were complaining that the police didn't arrest Jesus, they needed to arrest him, Nicodemus spoke up and said, our law doesn't judge people without first giving them a hearing to find out what they were doing, does it? Nicodemus spoke up on the side of justice. And what did the other leaders do? They sneered at him and accused him of being a Galilean, a country bumpkin like Jesus. Next and last time we hear about Nicodemus is after Jesus was crucified. He went in broad daylight and wrapped Jesus' body with about 75 pounds, 75 pounds of spices. And then Nicodemus and another Pharisee, Joseph of Arimathea, placed his body in the tomb. Three times Nicodemus is mentioned talking to Jesus, standing up for justice, preparing Jesus' body for burial. That probably wasn't part of his plan for the coming year or years. Brothers and sisters, how do we know what we're supposed to do next? How do we know? We don't. But God does. So during this season of Lent, let us prepare our hearts to be led by the Spirit. Pray. Listen. Make space for the Spirit's plan. Be willing to change, to allow unexpected things to happen. Focus on the spirit and allow yourself to be blown around. It's scary to be blown around. It requires a lot of trust. But allow it. Allow yourself to be blown around from one joy to the next from one soul to the next, be born into a new way of hearing and seeing and acting. Amen. <laughs> Let's turn to page seven in our hymn and read the affirmation of faith.
is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll be following the um, service on these pages, so keep, keep that page open. This is the time when we share our concerns and our joys, our prayers. So I need a pen. Why is it that one day you have 15 pens and the next you have none? All I have is Sharpies. Thank you. <laughs> I want to uh, first share the joy of all of the things that are going on during this season of Lent. Here we go. This week, there is a Wednesday Lenten service at 12.15 at Tonkhannock. I did not make note of who is preaching, but someone is preaching. It's not me. Tanya Olivian from Eatonville. Thank you. Uh, March 8th in the evening, Wednesday evening, we begin the Bible study on Revelation at 7. You can join by Zoom or join Jeff and Jill at their house. I'm going to be on Zoom, um, and I will send out the link uh, tomorrow. But if you don't do Zoom... I was just going to say that's the same time as Dale's Zoom. Yes, it is the same time as Dale's funeral. Uh, I mentioned that to Michelle and um, told her that I, I wouldn't be able to attend the funeral. She wasn't concerned. Someone else's, her, her friend Lori Robinson, who's a pastor, is doing the funeral. Um, if you want to attend the funeral, and I, you know, I understand completely, um, I, I would say maybe we push that back one week if we could. We can. Uh, then we'll like to, go. to the funeral. Yeah, I, I understand that. Um, sure. And then we may need to extend into April. We won't have enough time. Would you like to do that if you were planning to attend? Okay. Um, so we'll we'll put us put the Bible study off until the fifteenth. Okay. Thursday evening here at six p.m. is church council. So, plan to be here for that. And then, um, there will also be Thursday evening services at various churches in the cooperative ministry, uh, for those who, especially for those who can't make the 1215 service at um, Tonkanic. Anything else in the way of announcements? Um, please share with me your prayer concerns or joys. I heard from Bob that Peg Ball was in the hospital. She's home. She's home now, but was. Yeah. 
several times, right? Yeah. Um, <coughs> you received the base maker on Tuesday. Is that settling in? That seems to be. Yeah, they sometimes take a little time. They have to tweak things a little. But that Her should be. voice rang strong last night. Good. Yeah. Thank you for caring for her. Others? Martha. I met my new neighbors last Sunday. Great. And it is Cindy and Fred Howell. Oh my gosh. Cindy, who lived in Ralph Walker's house. Yeah. So I did let her know that any Sunday she would like to come to church, she was more than welcome to get a ride with me. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> It was a surprise. The Lord works <laughs> because in the I didn't serious recognize ways. the name when uh, Mike told me who bought it, and I'm like, so I went over, and then when she started talking, and I said something about it, I was at the church last Sunday for Lyle's benefit, and she said, "Oh, that's our church." <laughs> that's great. Yep. Well, then I'll have to talk to her about transferring her membership. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, that's really wonderful. That's great. <laughs> so you have a nice neighbor, and they have a nice neighbor. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters. Yeah. Amen. So tell me about uh, Lyle's benefit. We oh. raised more than $3,000, and we haven't gotten the money yet completely to Lyle because of some late donations, but hopefully soon we'll do it, and I get my writing check. That's wonderful. When you when you take it to him, yes, Sandy I was Harding. To Wednesday, well, so. Sandy Harding called me yesterday and said, "Would you please tell Lyle to cash that check?" <laughs> we had some several people wrote directly to him. Ah, uh, okay, okay. But, I mean, it's okay by us, but yeah. we were thrilled that there was such support. Yeah, that's really wonderful. What was it? One hundred and forty, one hundred and forty-six, or one hundred and forty-seven dinners? Oh, wow. And I think you only were planning for 100. I think so. 125 we got okay. because I ended up having, she called me, go get more rolls. But we had 15 pans of lasagna. Wow. So. That's wonderful. Thank you all for doing that. It's really great. It's what it's all about. Anything else that I missed? I missed a lot, I can see. I want to lift up Fred's story from over toward Laceyville, and he's had, suffering through a lot of things, and in the rehab over in Laceyville right now. Okay. But um, he's not doing very well. Mm. Okay. Fred's story. Yeah, if you, um, we don't have bulletins. If we did, you would see that the, the prayer list is kind of short. Um, so I will. Can, can you, do you mind sending me sure. names? I mean, I can look back on the old list, but um, we can sort of restart, do a restart. So if you have names of people that you would like put on the prayer list, just send them to me or, or to Bob, let Bob know. Others. It's a joy to be here with you. It was also a joy to be in Florida. <laughs> um, and I am glad that God reminded us this morning that he has more strength than we do and will get us through everything. And that was good to hear. <laughs> so I have, um, I, want, I would like to pray with you first for those we raised up in prayer. And then um, I have a prayer, which is in the bulletin that you don't have. It's a prayer by Thomas Merton for guidance and discernment. So I will also read that. Um, it's a little long, so. But, and then we will go to the table. Let us pray. Holy God, creator and redeemer, we thank you that you do not leave us alone, but labor to make us whole. 
We thank you for hearing our prayers and reaching out in spirit and in truth to those people and situations we have raised up. Peg Ball, new neighbors, Lyle, and those who supported his benefit in many different ways. Fred's story. We thank you for hearing these prayers and for reaching out in spirit and in truth to those people and situations that we have named aloud or in our hearts. Help us to perceive your unseen hand in the unfolding of all our lives. And now, Lord, we pray a prayer for guidance and discernment. Lord God, we have no idea where we're going. We don't see the road ahead of us. We can't know for certain where it will end nor do we really know ourselves. And the fact that we think we're following your will doesn't mean we're actually doing so. We believe that the desire to please you does, in fact, please you. We hope we have that desire in all that we're doing. We hope that we'll never do anything apart from that desire to please you. And we know that if we do this, you will lead us by the right road, even though we might not know it. So we'll trust you always. Though it may seem that we're lost in the shadow of death. We will not fear, for you are with us always and will never leave us to make our journey alone. Amen. In this season of Lent, we are invited to consider how we live as followers of Christ, to look at our decisions and our actions straight on, honestly, to hold them up to the example of Christ and to make amends. In this time of silence and in the prayer of confession, found in your hymnal. I invite you to look at your life, look at your decisions, look at how you spend your time, and first I will invite you to the table. And then we will turn to the confession on page 8. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us offer one another signs of reconciliation and love. Peace be with you. As forgiven and reconciled people, let us now offer ourselves and our gifts. Lord be with you. And also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and
hand made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has is died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood. All who love the Lord. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you.
heavenly banquet. Please join me in the prayer printed in your hymnal on page 11. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to our others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is... Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness, number 2120. In the, the Little Faith We Sing. Let's sing um, verses one and four. Go 
in peace. Amen.